am a current seminary student at Wesley Theological Seminary, and I have the honor of being on staff at Fishing Creek Salem UMC working with young adults. A few weeks ago, I had the honor of participating in a local high school baccalaureate service. As I stood up sharing my thoughts with the up-and-coming high school graduates, I had this deep fear rise up in me. I had the fear and the realization for the very first time or for another time that the majority of these graduates, the majority of these high school graduates will never walk into a church again. A bold claim, but a realistic one. Over the past 18 months, I've had the honor of working with young adults as a director of a young adult ministries. And through a plethora of conversations I've had with these young adults, I've realized that there is a deep disconnect between young adults and faith communities these days. The mere survey of any one of our congregations in the Susquehanna Conference, we realize that there's a lack of young adult presence. Many of us have asked that golden question before, how do we get more young adults in our church? The simple question of why, why are young adults not engaged in the church is often uttered by many of us. What I've realized over the last 18 months is that this question cannot be answered with a simple response or through a mere blog post of the top new ways to reach young adults, because <laughs> the problem is more deeper and more nuanced. Because there are currently 50 million young adults in the United States, which makes up about a 15% of our population. But who are? Who are these 50 million young adults? Well, the traditional answer for any one of us would be, well, someone between the ages of 18 and 35. Some young adults I surveyed recently I asked them, how would you identify your age group? And I got three responses. The first one, it's a time period. The second one was, it's a season of life. So those two seem normal. And the third one was like, I think it's just a lifestyle. The reality is then that this age group is so diverse. This group of people consists of college students at any institution of higher education. These are young adults who are working full time or seeking to work full time. They're married, they're single, they're dating. They may be parents, they may be single parents. They may already be divorced or they may even be widow or widowers. So now as I begin sharing with you some statistics about this diverse generation, I want you to keep two things in mind. The first one is there are, diff there are different kind of dropouts as well as faithful young adults who never drop out at all. And we, keep, we can see some of them here at annual conference. And so we first need to take care to not lump an entire generation together because each story of disconnection requires a personal, tailor-made response. And I think this is why program language is no longer effective. Number two, I believe that the dropout problem at its core is a faith development problem. And to use church language, it's a disciple-making problem. The church is not adequately preparing the next generation to follow Christ faithfully in a rapidly changing culture. So young adults are known as the missing generation in the church. According to you, last me, written by David Kenneman, he would share these statistics. 61% of young adult uh, Protestants ages 18 to 29 have dropped out of church after attending regularly. So what this means is 61% of our youth groups, 61% of our church youth won't be a part of the church once they graduate high school. Another statistic is 57% of all young adult Christians say that they are just less active in the church compared to when they were 15. Once they reach 15, then their level of involvement is significantly reduced. And the last statistic, which I think is the most staggering, 75% of young adults are currently not attending church on a regular basis. 75% of those who grew up in the church or who did not are not active in the church. And because of this staggering statistic, young adults are often known as the black hole in church attendance. So the reality is the universal church, all churches, churches in our annual conference are struggling with this issue and we're struggling to be in relationship with young adults effectively. So then I looked at what are the UMC clergy statistics here are some to share with you. In the general UMC church, there were 16,290 elders in 2013. And out of those 16,000, only 962 were under 35. So that would give us a 5.91 percentage of young adult clergy. Now in the Northeast jurisdiction, 
there were 3,042 elders in 2013. Now, out of those 3,000, only 126 of them were under 35. That would give us a 4.14 percentage, even lower. Now, in our annual conference, in the Susquehanna Conference, all clergy, elders, deacons, local pastors combined, there are 529 clergy in 2013. Out of those 529, 41 of them are under 35, which would give us a little higher percentage compared to the average. It would give us a 7.75 percentage. So through my research and my personal thoughts and through the David Kinneman work, I think there are two categories to share with you this morning of why I think young adults are disconnected and why they're not participating in our churches. Let's start with the personal challenges. The first personal challenge is we have friends who are just not committed to Christ. If we can believe that 75% of my generation is not engaged in the church, then we would expect myself and my peers to have friends who aren't Christian. And so because of that, that is a personal hindrance for me to be in the church. The second one, there is disappointment with ecclesiastical machinery. I think there is some sort of distrust that I have formed with the church and the hierarchy that established with it. The third one, we have inconsistent mentors. There's either inconsistency in the mentor's personal life or mentors who aren't truly invested in the relationship so they aren't consistent with it. Number four, I think there are unresolved doubts and personal fragmentation. So in the midst of our young adult years, this is where our identity is formed. This is where we uh, form who we are and what we believe. In the midst of that, then we have doubts. In the midst of our overeducated society where we can learn about anything by going to the internet, that has established many doubts and fragmented what I believe. The fifth one, I think we have, young adults have poor personal choices with ongoing impact. The reality is young adults make mistakes, we aren't perfect, and so because of that, my, I have allowed myself to stick, keep away from the church because I have felt I've been judged. Not saying, not saying that the church has judged me, but I have felt that I may be judged because of my lifestyle or because of the things that are on my body. And the last one, I think there's some type of syrup, a spiritual sabotage. You can use whatever verbiage you want to use behind there, but I think there's an effort out there that's trying to keep this already disengaged uh, generation keeping it further away from us. So that was personal challenges, and I think now there are six church disconnections from you last me, and they're on the front of your daily link this morning. So young adult, emerging adults often feel disconnected from the church because it seems first overprotective. Young adults sense that the church does not value their creativity or cultural engagement, which is very crucial to their lifestyle. So their creativity would produce something new and would presumably be different than traditions. Number two, it's the, church, the young adults find the church to be shallow. Some young adults find church to be boring and superficial. Number three, anti-science. With medicine advances, personal technology, travel, care of the natural world, young adults feel that church does not help them interact with science in a positive way. I think a clear example of this is the battle between evolution and creation. Number four, repressive. Religious roles, particularly sexual mores, feel stifling to the individualistic mindset of young adults. Number five, exclusive. Young adults are being shaped by a culture that esteems open-mindedness, tolerance, and acceptance. So thus Christianity's claim to be exclusive is a hard sell. And the last one, doubtless. Young adults find the church should not be a place to openly share and express their doubts. All of these things, both the personal and the church corporate ones, I, I think all of these are a barrier for community and for relationships to be formed. These are relational barricades, and, and this is so crucial because these are millions of lives, millions of young adults' lives that are at stake. So we know millennials are the largest generation in American history, and also are a generation that are disconnecting from church and faith in large numbers that we've seen in generations. The consequences of not paying attention to our disconnected relationships with this generation will have a significant impact on the church. But more than that, I think it's personal for you and I. For me, my heart breaks when I think about a few of my peers from high school. A couple of names that come to mind are Gabe and Ariana and Josh, who have not been able to find the church to be a healthy place for them to be, for them to openly wrestle with a faith and wrestle with God. 
And they're not even finding the church to be relative to their life. But for some of you, it's not your peers. It's your children. It's your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. And in the midst of my own wrestling, in the midst of my own battling the statistics, I'm always drawn to prayer. I'm drawn to prayer because that's where I need to find my hope. And I think that's where we find our hope as a body. So together this morning now, I think we need to go to prayer. I think we should go to prayer and ask God for wisdom. Wisdom in building relationships of reconnection that will allow all of us, not just me, but all of us, to participate in seeing God's faithfulness extended to a new generation. I want you to think of two young adults now. I want you to call to mind one young adult from your church or a grandchild or a child who may have lost the faith. So think of that person now. Then also think about a young adult who is still in the church, still in the church, still engaged with faith, still engaged with discipleship, and let's rejoice and let's be thankful for that life. And let us pray with urgency. God is calling us to have an urgency for this generation. I think there is something powerful for all of us this morning, praying for all of those young adults that came to mind. I'm going to give you a time to pray silently, and then I will conclude our time of prayer with a prayer. Let us pray together. Oh God, we are drawn to you for hope. God, we come to you because you have first loved us. You have called each one of us by name and, and have given each of us an abundant and full life. You, oh God, love and care for your entire creation, for all of your people. And God, we are mindful today for my peers for a generation who is lost and falling further away from you. For this, O oh God, we mourn. So God, we pray to you. God, grant us peace. Grant us grace. And grant us urgency to be in relationship with a new generation. So God, give us the minds to understand. Give us the words to affirm. And give us attitudes to love. Because you, oh God, are the ultimate source of hope in this life. And God, we pray for every young adult that came to mind this morning. May each one of those young adults come to know you in a deeper and more holistic way. And God, we lift this all up in your holy and your amazing name. Amen.